I have said it before and I'll say it again. Conservatives are so pathetically insecure about their own positions that the entire culture has revolved around them desperately trying to, as they say, own the libs. Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk, Alex Jones, literally thousands of YouTube compilations use exact childish terminology to entertain themselves with rather than their own super important issues like a free vaccine that's been saving lives and companies saying happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. And the libs of TikTok accounts on Twitter is the apotheosis of this, in which they purposefully target the lowest hanging fruit they can find, oftentimes the creator being a child, and try to expose it. I'm going to discuss the obvious example first because it's perfectly indicative of how hopelessly sociopathic the owner of this account seems to be, so we need to establish a few things here. The Trevor Project is a wonderful suicide hotline for LGBTQ people. You see, because some parents are still awful to their children if they believe that they are gay, they can be abusive towards them, to the point of them being suicidal. Nearly one in five LGBTQ teens have attempted suicide. It is attempted roughly every 45 seconds, and a large factor of that is helicopter evil parents that won't let them live their lives because they think they're being groomed by pedophiles, which is a blatantly homophobic, false, dangerous mindset that fucking kills teenagers. The Trevor Project is a necessary, wonderful organization that I've donated to numerous times and is meant to fucking prevent people from offing themselves. And they recently introduced this new feature on the website where if you tap the escape key three times, it immediately closes the page and clears the history. It's meant to allow you to access the site without the aforementioned evil parents persecuting you. Now what did the libs of TikTok account have to say about this feature that a suicide hotline implemented. They are now teaching kids to hide information from their parents in an effort to create division and mistrust. This is what cults do. Alright, first and foremost, you are not entitled to share every waking thought you have with your parents. That is at your discretion. Your parents need to know as much about you as you're willing to tell and nothing more. And secondly, if your parents are investigating your text messages and search history, they do not fucking respect you, and they are not good parents. And this kind of attitude leads to kids being fucking killed. But instead of the abusive invasion of privacy issue, Libs of TikTok is more concerned that the Trevor Project has implemented a feature against this. If a child makes their own parents unhappy because they're different from the norm, that is the parent's problem, not the child, and the burden should not be placed upon them. And it gives them the right to hide whatever they fucking want for their own protection. The parents being homophobic is not going to stop the child from being gay. It's something that happens independent of outside factors. The child is going to continue to be gay no matter what and needs these avenues to keep it secret if it's at their own peril. It literally looks like you are just advocating for the suicide of gay kids. I don't understand. And you seem to have a pretty big problem with kids being put in peril when some sociopath teacher said conservative kids can jump off a bridge. I'm not saying I'm disagreeing with your outrage at that statement. I'm just saying it's odd how you don't care about the protection of gay kids, just conservative kids. Moving on, this account has an outright habit of straight up bullying people for their looks. Here's an example of someone walking along with their bag at an airport with a bizarre outfit on, seemingly minding their own business, when some dickhead walking by thought it was so notable and hilarious that they stopped what they're doing to take a picture of them without their knowledge or consent, and post it online. And then libs of TikTok immediately went and assumed that they're left-leaning because no right-leaning person ever would ever dress up like a fucking idiot. They then quote retweeted their own hilarious tweet with an even funnier transphobic comment. What do you think the pronouns are? <laughs> And they do this a couple other times with people that are genuinely just living their life. Hey, here's an idea, libs of TikTok. What does your face look like? Because you, you never show it. These people are, they're putting themselves out there so it's so funny that you don't show your face and you don't show what you look like, but you think it's cool to just make fun of other people for what they look like. Here's an example of a trans man who suddenly had his period asking people for my doll and then being bullied and called epithets for it. Now, the video looks really faked. I, I get that. But I'm going to assume that it's real because the libs of TikTok account seems to believe that it's real. Now the libs of TikTok account is more concerned that the guy looks kind of strange than the bullying and the epithets that he suffered for asking for my doll. 
because that's clearly the bigger issue. You certainly have your priorities straight. Let's take a look at some of the comments from these people. In the aforementioned video, someone mentioned, hey, you're beautiful to the person taking it. So someone commented on that saying that they're a total enabler. I went and asked what they meant, and they said that they were enabling mental illness. I could go on for ages how this has been thoroughly debunked, that being trans is not a mental illness, but something tells me this guy isn't smart enough to even bother with. How does saying someone looks beautiful enable a mental illness, even if being trans was one? According to you, this person has a mental illness because they were born female, but believe that they're male. Was the guy supposed to call them ugly? Is that the proper thing he should have said? They didn't even mention his gender, they just mentioned that he looks beautiful. And a person's looks does not define their gender, nor their sex. So it isn't enforcing that idea in them, you're just upset that someone else seems to be catching a break. It's as if you legitimately just want to make life hell for people. And I want to reiterate that this guy is incorrect about trans people suffering from mental illness, specifically because they're trans. Now here's a reply to the previous tweet about the Trevor Project from a verified account calling for no mercy for pedophiles. This is the work of pedophiles. This is the work of people who want to undermine your parenting. We must protect the children at all costs. These people deserve no mercy. Because the Trevor Project made a suicide hotline to keep kids from killing themselves. But this is the work of pedophiles. We should protect them from a suicide hotline. They're also blatantly anti-vax, bullying people for saying that they've gotten vaccinated so that they don't kill people out of their own arrogance and idiocy. No guys, that's totally cringe. They're also in support of books like To Kill a Mockingbird being removed from school libraries. This one Reddit user said that people should buy copies of books like that and leave them in the libraries, and so the libs of TikTok account deduced that they didn't want to give kids the opportunity to read a book about racism and that they just want to diddle kids. I don't get how those two things are related to one another. Kill a Mockingbird doesn't even have any sexuality in it, as far as I know. For fuck's sake. Talking about segues, if you don't know, Seattle recently made public transportation free. So some narcissistic fascists felt the need to complain about homeless people riding the same bus as them. Sure, you might be getting to ride the bus for free, but you can't just enjoy that because homeless people need to walk into your space from the freezing northwestern winters to their destination. Destinations. Seattle is reaping what they sowed. Also, they're an election denier. Are you currently or have in the past been registered to vote in California and had something interesting happen with your recall election ballot slash vote? Post it in the comments below. I've gone over this in a previous video, but these are honestly so easy to debunk. I saw an ad on television with Obama telling me that this was a Republican recall and that we should vote to keep Newsom. Yeah, you saw an ad on television telling you to commit election fraud. That's believable. No, but my father was and he passed away over seven years ago and apparently voted for Biden in the last election. We've notified the authorities. God damn, if only there was some feature on your Android smartphone that could somehow prove that this happened. If only you just had some 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 tool you could use to capture the the image, I guess you'd say, of uh of 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 this vote. It, it sucks so much that you just simply can't prove it. I guess we just have to take your word for it. And also, these people coming in after, just do we just have to take their word for it too? Because if many people are saying it, it's got to be true. Because there's no way you can prove that. Now here's someone that somehow managed to capture proof that they got duplicates. Let's assume that this guy didn't print these himself, and let's assume that this wouldn't be caught within hours once they saw the identical names and addresses. You see that print right there? It doesn't matter if they fuck up and send you multiple ballots, you would still be committing a federal crime if you fraudulently submitted both of these ballots, and you would be caught. Not to mention the biggest factor, you get a ballot when you request a vote by mail ballot. Sorry to say it, but you might literally be implicating your ex-wife for a crime by presenting evidence that insinuates she ordered two ballots under two names intending to vote under both of them. That is fraud. And it wouldn't even work, because the election authority would notice either the signatures on the ballots would match, which would get it thrown out, or if you tried to do a different signature, it wouldn't match the signature they have on file for you, 
which again would get it thrown out. To put it simply, in the most simple terms, if you request a mail-in ballot, you must sign a legal attestation on the envelope and then election judges will verify the signature before the ballot is counted. The same standard used when voting in person. It, the whole reply section is filled with easily debunkable shit like this and the libs on TikTok account loves just airing it and blowing it up because fucking anything that's anti-lib is good, I guess. Holy hell, I wanna die because these teenagers are acting a little cringy. And you know what? That that would be terrible because honestly, would you be missing out on a lot if you somehow ended up dead? Because I, I would genuinely hate for that to happen because you contribute loads to the general fucking community. I'm not sure if I would stop crying if we didn't have someone to advocate for the elimination of suicide prevention resources, or to randomly bully kids on Twitter for their looks, or to provide a voice for fascists. Genuinely, you're a great, valuable person. Now listen, I know you're very fucking slow, so I want to say this before you have a meltdown and bully me for my looks, because that's the only thing you know how to kind of do. I'm not advocating for your death here. This is a joke. Don't cancel me because I just told a joke. Don't be a fucking pussy. Just fucking deal with it.